Welcome back to Building Character, where we figure out how to play as your favorite fictional characters in Dungeons & Dragons. Stick around to the end of the video for input on future builds, and remember to like and subscribe. Good karma means better rolls next time you play. Probably. This week we're celebrating both the release of Let's Go Pikachu and Eevee, and next month's Super Smash Bros. game by building a Pokemon trainer. Pokemon debuted in red and green back in 1996. Since then we've had 7 generations and over 800 total Pokemon making catching them all harder than ever. I want to be the very best, like no one ever was. We'll start off by figuring out our goals for the build. First, we need to be able to summon monsters at will to do our bidding. Secondly, we'll give those monsters some special abilities to help us out in the world. And finally, we'll make sure that you're an expert at tracking down all your favorite Pokemon. For stats, we're using the standard point buy in the player's handbook. That's 15, 14, 13, 12, 10, and 8. If you want to roll stats, that's fine too. Just use this as a guide for your highest and lowest. Wisdom will be number one. It's how you relate to animals, which is kind of everything for this build. Next up, Charisma. You have to convince someone to give you a Pokemon to get started. Constitution after that. Most summoning spells require concentration, which is determined by your constitution. Intelligence after that. It'll help us out early game, even if it falls out after that. Dexterity next. It's not terrible and might help you stay on the bicycle. And strength is going to be our dump stat, as you'll have Pokemon to do any heavy lifting. For background, take Folk Hero. It gives you animal handling and survival proficiency, along with ground vehicles for a bicycle and rustic hospitality. That means that you can always find a place to rest in a town, perhaps operated by a group of identical nurses. We'll use Variant Human for plus one to wisdom and constitution. Any free language you want is yours. Take Persuasion for your skill of choice and Magic Initiate for your feat. Magic Initiate lets you learn one first level spell of your choice. Find Familiar spends one hour to summon a small animal of your choice, bats, cats, crabs, and more. Check the player's handbook. You can send it to a pocket dimension as an action, then bring it back with another action to a space within 30 feet of you. These allies can't attack yet, but you can cast spells through them with a touch range. For some touch cantrips for your Familiar to cast, take Shocking Grasp. It's a melee spell attack that deals 1d8 lightning damage and prevents the target from making reactions. Light creates a bright light and a 20-foot radius similar to HM5 Flash. A rat familiar with these cantrips would be a nice low-level Pikachu. We'll start off as a warlock. Level 1, you can pick a patron that will give you your powers. Now, Professor Oak definitely acts like a fae, giving children unreasonably dangerous animals and contributing to the world's obsession with these lesser fae known as Pokemon. So I'd go with Arch Fae. Pick two skills from the warlock skill list. Arcana and Nature would be a good fit for anyone with a Pokedex. Now level 1 Fey Warlocks can use their Fey Presence once per long rest. This creates an illusion of their patron that can charm or frighten creatures in a 10 foot cube that fail their wisdom save, which is 8 plus your proficiency plus your charisma if they tried to ride their bicycle inside. Of course you also have standard Warlock spells. Unseen Servant creates an invisible assistant that can do simple tasks for you but can't attack for an hour. Kind of like a little Kecleon Butler. It has a strength of 2 so don't expect it to move boulders for you just yet. Protection from good and evil defends a creature from celestials, fey, fiends, undead, aberrations, and elementals, forcing those creatures to attack with disadvantage and stopping them from charming or frightening you. This is a touch spell, so your Pokemon familiar can cast it. Think of it like a reflect or light screen. You have two cantrip options as well. Mage Hand creates a floating spectral hand that can move and interact with objects. It can't carry more than 10 pounds or activate something magical, but having a haunter test a non-magical trap is better than doing it yourself. Prestidigitation does a bunch of little flames flavor things like heating water, lighting, or putting out torches. Check the full description in the player's handbook, it's a bunch of tiny things that a Pokemon could do for you. At level 2, you get two invocations. Beast Speech lets you talk to animals without using a spell slot. Devil's Sight lets you see normally in darkness, magical or non-magical, making it a little easier to get to Lavender Town. For your spell, check out Illusory Script, which lets you write a secret letter that can only be read by those you deem worthy. It's a touch spell, so you can have your familiar carry your mail. I know literally nobody has ever used the mail items in Pokemon, but they keep putting them in the game, so I'm putting it in the build. Level 3 Warlocks get a Pact Boon, meaning Professor Oak gives you a new Pokemon. Pact of the Chain lets your familiar attack and gives you more options. Imps, Pseudo Dragons, Quasites, and Sprites. Check out the Monster Manual for their stats. Some of these are even in the back of the player's handbook. You can also learn second level spells, so look at Spider Climb, which lets you climb walls like a spider. This is a touch range, so your familiar can cast it for some sweet HM8 rock climb action. Level 4 Warlocks get an ability score improvement or feat. The Animal Handler feat from the Feats for Skills on Earth Arcana Online adds one to your wisdom, gives you expertise for your animal handling checks, and the ability to command beasts within 60 feet of you as a bonus action, as long as they're friendly and not taking commands from anyone else. 
At the fifth level, you get another invocation. Gift of the Depths from Xanathar's Guide to Everything lets you cast Water Breathing once per day without using a spell slot, letting 10 creatures breathe underwater for 24 hours, so you and all your friends can go for a dive. You also can learn third level spells. Fly lets you fly with a speed of 60 feet. It's a touch range, so your familiar can cast it. HM2 is always the best HM, let's be honest. At this point, we're going to start taking some druid levels. Multiclassing as a standard spellcaster with a warlock is a little weird, but it's actually kind of simple. Basically, you have all the slots from both classes you would normally have, but you can combine your list, casting druid spells as warlocks and warlock spells as druids. For cantrips, check out Guidance and Resistance. They let you add 1d4 to ability checks and saves respectively. They have a range of touch, so your Pokemon can use Helping Hand. For spells, Long Strider increases the target's movement speed by 10 feet for an hour. It's a touch spell, so your Pokemon can use it like a Tailwind. Animal Friendship is a spell for you, the trainer, basically Charm Person, but for animals. A beast within 30 feet of you makes a Wisdom save, and if they fail, they are charmed by you for 24 hours. Remember, your Druid spell save is 8, plus your Proficiency, plus your Wisdom modifier. Second level, Druids gain the ability to Wild Shape. Your form option is any beast you've seen of challenge rating 1 fourth or lower. You can't cast spells as a beast, but any spell you already have up stays up as long as you keep maintaining your concentration. Think of this as Bill's failed teleporter that turns people into Pokemon, but like a portable version. I don't know, I'm mostly doing Druid for the spells here. You can also pick a Druid Circle. Circle of the Shepherd from Xanathar's Guide to Everything is perfect for anyone whose PC is overflowing with Pokemon. From this you get Speech of the Woods, which lets you learn Sylvan and allows you to communicate simple ideas with beasts. It's kind of redundant and actually not as good as Beast Speech, but Sylvan is nice. There's also Totem Spirit, which summons a spectral spirit of a Pokemon, either a bear, hawk, or unicorn. The bear gives everyone a 30-foot aura advantage on strength checks and 5 temporary hit points. The hawk lets you give your allies advantage with a reaction and free advantage on perception checks. Finally, the unicorn gives advantage on skills to find creatures within the aura, and it also lets you add your druid level to any healing you do. Speaking of which, Cure Wounds heals 1d8 plus your Wisdom modifier. It's a touch spell, so Heal Pulse is an option for your familiar. At 3rd level Druid, you can learn 2nd level spells. Locate Plants and Animals lets you name any plant or animal and figure out where it is within 5 miles of you, like a Pokedex. Enhance Ability is similar to your Totem Spirit, but you can cast it through your familiar because it has a touch range. You can give one target advantage on any one type of ability check for up to an hour. Constitution also gives you 2d6 extra hit points, the Strength bonus also doubles your carrying capacity, and the Dexterity bonus makes it so that you don't take damage on a fall from 20 feet or lower. The Strength boost is similar to Strength, the HM, helping you move heavy boulders that are blocking your path. Also take a look at Lesser Restoration, which removes an effect of Blind, Deaf, Poison, or Paralysis, similar to Heal Bell, it's also a touch spell so your familiar can cast it. At the 4th level, you can turn into a Pokemon of challenge rating 1 half or lower, and it can have a swim speed, so Surf is an option. You also get an ability score improvement, more wisdom will help your druid spells and animal handling skills. 5th level druids can learn 3rd level spells. Conjure animals can summon animals. You can summon 1 beast of challenge rating 2 or lower, 2 beasts of challenge rating 1 or lower, 4 beasts of challenge rating 1 half or lower, or 8 beasts of 1 fourth or lower. The spell description says that the DM will have the monster stats, but be a good player and prepare a small sheet with your favorites from the monster manual. Speak with plants lets you speak with plants. Plants. It lasts for 10 minutes and you can ask the plants to get out of the way if they've made the area difficult terrain. Technically you're not cutting them down, but it serves the same purpose as HM1 cut. 6th level Shepherd Druids get Mighty Summoner, giving every creature you summon 2 HP per hit die it has, and Monster Manual is kind of important for this build, so check that out to figure out how many hit die your beast will have. It also makes their attacks magical in terms of overcoming damage, so now your normal types have Foresight. At 7th level, you can learn 4th level spells. Conjure Minor Elementals is the same as Conjure Animals, but you summon Elementals instead of Beasts. Conjure Woodland Beings is the same, but with Fey, and you can learn that as well. Giant Insect is a little bit different. It lets you make some useful bug types. You can create 10 giant centipedes, 3 giant spiders, 5 giant wasps, or 1 giant scorpion. So, Scoilipede, Ariados, Beedrill, or Drapion, whatever your little bug trainer desires. 8th level druids get to transform into creatures CR 1 or lower and can fly in their beast shape. There's also an ability score improvement, so cap off that wisdom. At 9th level, you learn 5th level spells. Conjure Elemental summons an elemental of 5th level or lower for up to an hour as long as you maintain concentration. If you lose concentration, the elemental doesn't disappear, it becomes hostile to you and your party. 
Find an elemental of your choice from the Monster Manual, Morden Kanan's Tome of Foes, or Volo's Guide to Monsters. Magmar would be a good fire elemental, Vaporeon for water, Palosand for earth, or Tornadoes for wind. There's also the spell Awaken. It takes 8 hours to cast, but gives a plant or beast an intelligence score of 10. The plant gets limbs and can speak one language of your choice. Go with Druidic, nobody needs to know what you and your victory bell are talking about. The spell Planar Binding lets you catch a Fey, Fiend, Celestial, or Elemental for 24 hours if it fails a Charisma save. This is a tricky build to decide when to end, as you can catch literal gods of the game, but planar binding might be a way to justify this. It doesn't matter, I mean, we're going to level 20 anyway, but this might be a good place to cap it. At the 10th level, Shepherd Druids get Guardian Spirit, which means that any beast or fey you summon heals half of your druid level at the beginning of each of its turns it spends within the aura of your totem spirit. 11th level druids can learn a 6th level spell. Conjure Fey summons a fey of challenge rating 6 or lower, and similar to Conjure Elemental, losing concentration turns it hostile, so make sure you're maintaining that. 12th level druids get an ability score improvement. More constitution will make your saves more successful and your Pokemon less likely to turn on you. At 13th level, you can learn 7th level spells. Plane Shift sends a creature to another plane that fails a charisma save or can transport 8 friendly creatures. It's touch range, so your familiar can now travel between dimensions, so it's probably a Celebi or something else legendary by now. Nice work. 14th level Shepherd Druids get Faithful Summons, which means that once per long rest, when you hit 0 HP, you can cast Conjure Animals at the 9th level, bringing 4 animals of challenge rating 2 or lower to your aid and defending your body for up to an hour. For your capstone, we're going with 15th level of Druid for an 8th level spell. Control Weather lets you control the weather. It takes a long time to cast, but it can create some serious storms for up to 8 hours. When planning the build, I wasn't counting on cast form being the capstone, but here we are. Now that we've hit level 20, let's figure out how viable of a build this is. First off, you have a ton of summoning options, which can really help with the action economy. Next, you're a Pokemon Master, and any and all beasts are your friends. Probably. Finally, your Find Familiar has a ton of utility options, which you can use to add to your summons or allies for buffs. For weaknesses, you take a while to get any offensive abilities whatsoever. You spend a lot of time investing in the familiar, and it will probably be killed in two or three hits, making you spend another 10 minutes to summon a new one. You're also entirely lacking in any sort of physical skills, relying entirely on your connection to beasts. Finally, your most powerful conjurations will turn on you when you lose concentration, which can make them more of a liability than an asset. But being a Pokemon master is all about forming a partnership with your Pokemon. That partnership means understanding which Pokemon to use in which situation, and understanding that the best power you have is deep pockets to hold all the Pokeballs. Thanks for watching. If you liked the video, subscribe for more. We'll be doing another anime ish character sometime next month. Vote in the comments for which you'd like to see. Your options are Mikasa from Attack on Titan, Piccolo from Dragon Ball Z, or Trevor Belmont. We'll be back next week whipping up a new video, so be sure to come back for more.